Matt O'Connor, founder of Fathers for Justice, has proposed that we remove Emmeline Pankhurst from her plinth in the Westminster Gardens because of the role which she played through the White Feather campaign in bullying men to go and fight in the First World War. And I very much support the spirit of this idea because the White Feather campaign was an appalling event in our history which um, humiliated so many men to go and sacrifice their lives in the war. In particular, there were 350,000 underage soldiers. Underage soldiers were disproportionate in number in, in the deaths in the First World War, and I suspect that very many of these young men went to fight precisely in, res in response to receiving a white feather from one of the suffragettes. But what I want to talk about here is um, the role which Emmeline Pankhurst played in, in, in getting votes for women because the, um, the, the widespread belief that we all have is that Emmeline Pankhurst and the suffragettes um, battled against an oppressive patriarchy that was determined that women should not have the vote and that, and that they played an absolutely key role in getting women the vote. And what I want to argue here is that the history was a great deal more complex than that. And actually, this is pretty much a myth. Um, the, the, the way what actually happened was that, um, or what we need to remember is that Emmeline Pankhurst was very opposed to working women and working men having the vote. And in fact, when in 1902, the Labour Party proposed universal suffrage for both men and women, Emmeline Pankhurst left the Labour Party and set up the WSPU where she campaigned for women to have the vote on the same terms as, as men. And what she meant by that was she wanted propertied women to have the vote. And she was always very clear about this. And there were a number of arguments around at the time. Um, so, for example, Ada Neil, Neil Chu, who was um, a, a working woman who went round the country speaking and campaigning for female suffrage and workers' rights, she, she was appalled by this. She said, um, the entire class of wealthy women would be enfranchised, but the great body of working women, married or single, would be voteless still. And uh, even Winston Churchill thought this was a crazy idea. He said, uh, the basic principle of the bill is to deny votes to those who are upon the whole the best of their sex. We are asked by the bill to defend the proposition that a spinster of means living in the interest of man-made capital is to have a vote and the working man's wife is to be a denied a vote even if she is a wage earner and a wife. Now, it's difficult to know why um, Emmeline Pankhurst had such a hostility to um, working people getting the vote. But um, it, it's quite likely they were actually, the suffragettes were a small organisation of between two to 5,000 people. And they were funded exclusively by very wealthy, propertied women. And these women would no doubt not have given their support to an organisation that was going to give the vote to, to working class men and women. There was also um, a, a contempt for working people. So, for example, um, Sylvia Pankhurst, who I think did a lot of very good work in the East End for working families, she was actually disowned by the suffragettes because of this support for the working classes. And in fact, her, her sister Christabel added that um, she said, a working women's movement was of no value. Working women were the weakest portion of their sex. Their lives are too hard, their education too meagre to equip them for the contest. Surely it is a mistake to use the weakest for the struggle. We want picked women, the very strongest and the most intelligent. And um, what all this meant was that um, the Liberal Party, which was in power at the time, they, they were only just in power. They always had the sort of Conservative Party were in very closely competing with them. And had they voted um, as Emmeline wanted them to do, just for propertied women to have the vote, um, then this would have put the Liberal Party out of power forever. And um, Lloyd George explained it quite simply. He said, uh, a limited female suffrage spells disaster for, to liberalism, and unless you take it in hand and take it all at once, this catastrophe is inevitable. In other words, first of all, the vote needs to be extended to men as well. Um, 
Now, the suffragists, um, headed up by Millicent Fawcett, were much more politically savvy about this. Um, just one moment, my battery's running low. Oh, just a sec. So yes, the suffragists were much more politically savvy about this. They were a much larger grassroots organisation. They were made up of, I think in, in 1913, they had about 50,000 members. They were made up of um, trades organisations and, and suffrage groups all over the country, working, working women from all over the country. And um, they realised the importance of men being given the vote as well as women. So what they did was they lent their support and they had they had considerable financial resources at their disposal because they were grass from their membership fees of their grassroots organization i think they had about 40,000 45,000 pounds in 1913 and what they said to the labor party is look we will support you if whenever it, it, the question comes up you will support suffrage for women and um, they did a lot to support and help build up the labor party so for example Whenever um, there, 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 were, there were local elections and there was a Liberal candidate who didn't support votes for women, they would support um, the Labour Party putting forward one of their candidates who did support votes for women. And in that way, quite a few um, liberal, liberal MPs lost their seat. And they also did a lot of really practical work like, um, you know, speak, going out and speaking, doing newsletters, door to door knocking. Um, you know, they, they really, um, they brought pressure to bear on MPs, they organised petitions, they lobbied Parliament. They did a lot of, of really good work to help support the Labour Party. And actually what happened was that a lot of the, what had previously been women in the Liberal Party actually changed over to the Labour Party. So, um, and, and, and in this way, um, they supported it and the Labour Party su supported the idea of giving women the vote. And... At this point, it would have really been in Asquith's interest to give women the vote, and probably he wanted to give women the vote. But the reason that he couldn't do so was because of the suffragette violence. And what you have to remember is this was a period of history called the Great Unrest, where there were actually warships going up the Mersey because of the level of um, unrest in the dockyards and... There were 3,500 3, infantry and cavalry stationed at Liverpool. There were 12,000 soldiers quartered in central London <clears throat> parks. So this was a period when there was already a great deal of unrest. And if, and there was also um, in, 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 in Ireland, the um, Protestants were arming in, in fear of home rule. So if Asquith was seen to capitulate to... Um, this this violence then this would have put him on a much weaker footing with all this other unrest and the reason that we don't appreciate the importance of this is because the level of suffragette violence and terrorism is simply unknown it was not simply that they went around breaking panes of glass of selfridges they, they, they the, the level of terrorism was very much more serious than that and i'm just going to read you out some of the things they did so how would how would we feel today about a group which went around bombing or burning down our county council offices, courtrooms, trade centres, museums, theatres, art galleries, universities, teacher training colleges? These were all <clears throat> suffragette targets. One of the things which they really focused on, which was part of the smashing the panes of glass, was putting businesses out of action. And we have to remember that this was a period in history where there's no welfare state. So when they um, put a business out of action, there would be a whole lot of people who would lose their jobs. And in fact, um, they, they burnt down a, a tea room in Kew Gardens and, and the employees lost their jobs. And the head of the tea room went to the suffragette offices and said, you know, my employees have lost their work because of what you've done. Can you please give us compensation? Which of course, the suffragettes didn't do. Um, but they also, they, they um, bombed or burnt down 17 industrial premises, including a lino factory, laundry, wood yards, freight yards. <clears throat> Portsmouth Dockyard was burnt to the ground and that killed um, two people. 
They also um, attack sporting premises. Um, and uh, this included 17 sports grandstands, cricket pavilions, golf courses, changing rooms, refreshment stands, bowling greens, and so on. They burnt or bombed down churches. There were 32 churches which were destroyed during this period, including one which dated back to 1100. Um, and we should also remember that um, they had this, they, 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 were not, they were not afraid of putting life at risk. So one of their earliest attacks was at the Theatre Royal in Dublin and petrol was scattered, fires were lit, three bombs went off, all while, while the theatre was full. And there were a number of other bombs and really it's only because of sheer incompetence that the suffragettes didn't cost more loss of life. Um, they had a bomb planted outside the Bank of England, which would, if it had not been defused by a policeman, gone off in a busy commercial area mid-afternoon. There was a bomb at Lime Street Station, Liverpool, packed with nuts and bolts. There was another bomb containing 24 cartridges of gunpowder placed in the toilets of a theatre to go off during a matinee performance. And um, also there was the postbox campaign where um, Emily Davidson, when she found out, she set, set post boxes, you know, set post, the contents of post boxes on fire. And when she found out that the fires went out too quickly, she filled them with sulfuric acid and, and a number of postmen received severe injuries. And there was also, I think she put phosphorus in there, which also caused lung damage. They also had some really... Um, ambitious and profoundly terrible um, plans, which fortunately, as I say, they were too incompetent to be successful. So one of these involved planting a large bomb at Windledon Reservoir near Barnsley. Had that been successful, the whole valley would have been flooded with consequent loss of life and livelihood. And they planted two bombs underneath Loch Katrine Aqueduct, which supplied half of Glasgow with water. Luckily, the lit fuses burned out before the detonation on both bombs, so due, probably due to bad weather. So um, they were also, as a result of all this, they were really hated by the general public. So, so altogether, it was very difficult for um, to, to actually give votes to women because of this violence. Now, what actually brought, caused, you know, women to be given the franchise was the First World War, because what the First World War meant was that um, a great many men had been out of the country, people had moved all over the country, so the current electoral register was simply no longer fit for purpose, and they had to develop a new electoral register. And when they knew this was going to happen, um, Millicent Fawcett and the suffragists worked together with Arthur Henderson, who I think was the head of the Labour Party at the time, to put forward a new, new suggestions for the electoral register, which included votes for women. And a speakers conference was held to um, propose and discuss this new electoral register. And Arthur Henderson made it very clear that unless um, they accepted the Labour Party's proposal for votes for women, which had been put there as a result of the suffragist collaboration, he would withdraw from the Speaker's Conference, which would have brought it to a halt. Um, so that it was, it was actually that which um, resulted in women getting the vote. Um, so I think that the two, the two really important things were actually it was the role of men in the First World War. And the other thing that it was actually this politicking, this political activity happening behind the scenes by the suffragists, which brought votes for women. And I think it's really important that we remember this in this current period when there are so many people insisting on violence and on protests as a way of bringing about political change. This has never been a way of bringing about successful political change. It was actually the normal political processes behind the scenes and the First World War which brought the votes for women. And, I, and, and Emmeline Pankhurst and the suffragettes were actually an obstacle to this. They did not help this, rather they hindered it. And I think this is what we need to remember today. Thank you.